Hi friends, I'm looking for good light to do my video today. Many times I sit right over here on that purple couch and do my videos, but it's early in the morning and I'm going in here because the light is better. And I want to talk to you today about the difference in the cost of living between the United States and a few cities in Mexico. I'm going to sit right there. Oh, if you haven't been in my, uh, watch my videos very much, you might be curious about that. It's a paper mache crocodile. That's my uh, Yamaha Grand keyboard. Over there is uh, my computer desk. That's where I answer your comments. I'm going to put the camera right there on that tripod. Oh, my last video I was sitting out there on the patio by the pool with the camera pointed this way and somebody asked me about this. It's, um, they said, is it a gargoyle? No, it's not a gargoyle. It's my dragon. And how do I keep the dragon from misbehaving, you may ask? Well, I have help. I have a wizard that keeps him on the straight and narrow. Anyway, I'm going to sit right there and we'll talk. Please enjoy my stories or whatever else might be on my mind today. Before we talk about the cost of living in Mexico and the comparisons of that to the United States, um, I have to do what I can to forestall those comments that I always get when I talk about the cost of living here, or how much things cost here. Or the video I did uh, you know, a few days ago about the costs of um, the prices being posted on the wall at the Ahihik Clinic, a hospital. Every time I make a video about things like that, I get these comments that say, oh, you're living in Mexico because you couldn't afford to live in the United States. Or, oh yeah, you're just down there for the cheap prices. So, uh, don't waste your time leaving that kind of a comment because, first of all, it's not true. Uh, well, it's partly true. Of course, the cost of living is uh, part of the reason that people like to retire in Mexico. But it's not always the main reason. <clears throat> it doesn't matter how much money you have, it's good to save some of it. <laughs> uh, I came down here as a tourist about almost 20 years ago now. And I came down not to Ahihik and the north shore of Lake Chapala to look for a place to retire. That, that's just not what was going on. I came to explore the city of Guadalajara because it's a wonderful city and I just came as a tourist. Guadalajara was started in 1541. The church uh, construction began in 1541. That's 49 years after Columbus discovered America. Guadalajara is the oldest European-style city in the Western Hemisphere. Um, I'm not a big history buff, but, did, you know, if you grow up in the United States and you think, you know, 200 years is an old thing, uh, and then you go to Europe and you find out that, wow, there are some old things in, that, that, that 200 years in Europe is young. <clears throat> Anyway, um, I didn't come down here looking for a cheap place to retire. I came down here as a tourist and um, I found that uh, I love the city of Guadalajara. It's wonderful historically. And it's wonderful in a, in a modern sense too. It's, um, it's just a great city. I love Guadalajara. Of course, I'd much rather be um, in the fresh air down here on the lake, as would a whole bunch of other Guadalajarans who come down for the weekend. Anyway, don't leave me a comment about being the cheap SOB that moved to Mexico because he couldn't afford to live in the United States. 
Uh, so let's get to it. Every day in the comments on my YouTube channel, I get these questions. Um, is it really cheaper to live in Mexico? How much does it cost to live in Mexico? Uh, why is it cheaper in Mexico? Can I live on $800 of Social Security if I retired in Mexico? Um, for those of you who are always in a hurry, I'm going to give you the short answer. The answer is yes, you can live on $800 of Social Security in Mexico, even right here on the North Shore of Lake Chapala. But there's a catch to that. I have some notes I'm going to use today, and uh, let me apologize in advance for appearing to read some of these, but I want to make sure that the numbers I give you are um, um, correct. Here's the catch to living here for $800 of Social Security. Um, the federal government of Mexico requires you to show uh, um, your finances in order to get a residence visa, either temporal or permanente, temporary or permanent, to be a legal resident of Mexico. And let me tell you what the current numbers are. Now, if you're watching this in, you know, 2025, <laughs> this isn't going to be accurate. But it's accurate as of uh, 2019. You have to show an income of about 1,200 U.S. dollars per month in order to qualify for a residence visa temporal um, to be a legal resident in Mexico. Or you can have, alternatively, uh, $20,000 in a liquid investment account. If there's, and that's for one person, if there's more people, like a couple, you add 25% to those numbers um, for each additional pers person. Um, so for a retired couple, the 2019 income requirement to be a legal resident uh, of Mexico is about 1,500 U.S. dollars per month or 25,000 U.S. dollars in the bank. And when you make application for your residence visa, uh, they will ask you to provide uh, bank statements to show that you qualify financially. So, can you live for $800 worth of Social Security? Yeah, <laughs> but you can't get a residence visa. <clears throat> now, there are those people who come and go as a tourist, and you don't need to financially qualify to be a tourist, and Mexico doesn't have any, you know, big restrictions like the United States about people coming as a tourist and, and visiting. And you can get a tourist visa for 180 days. Well, if you want to go out of the country and come back every 180 days, you can do it that way. Um, Mexico's not big on you doing it that way because that's not the purpose of a tourist visa. Anyway. Another thing that I want to say about the costs of living when you're doing comparisons is that <clears throat> numbers like this are always averages. So if I talk about how much it costs to rent something here and make a comparison between the United States and Chapala, if you live in New York City or if you live in rural North Dakota, your results may vary. So keep in mind that these are averages. Um, and, you know, I don't know any average people when it comes to how much money do they spend to live, their cost of living. It's been my experience and my observation that people generally spend what they have to spend. Now, some of them who are well organized and think ahead include in that monthly budget some savings. So I'm not saying the cost of living doesn't include maybe putting away some money for savings. But people always spend what they have to spend. If you have $400 a month to live, that's what you're going to spend. If you have $5,000 a month to spend, 
you're pretty much going to spend $5,000 a month. So you ask me, how much does it cost to live in Mexico? Well, tell me how much you got. I'll tell you how much it's going to cost you. Um, that's how it works. So anyway, keep in mind that these are averages. I've made videos before where I talk about, well, this is how much the, the meat costs at Walmart, or this is how much it costs to go to the doctor, or, you know, what do I think is the uh, difference in the costs of living between the United States and Mexico. And it's always just my opinion, or it's one single little piece of information, but I decided that since I get these questions all the time, that I should do some research and come up with some um, educated answers. Some of these uh, figures come from government studies. Some of them come from um, think tank groups. I found all this on the internet, of course. And some of it comes from a website called Numio or something like that, where they compare the costs of living um, of different countries all over the world. That website, uh, some of the figures that I have here based on that, they're based on 24,228 entries in the past 18 months from 2,186 different contributors who um, uh, filled out a form on a website and said, this is what we're spending to live where we live. Here's some percentages. The cost of living in Mexico is 53% lower than the cost in the United States, and that's an aggregate, again, an average for all cities, and rent is not included in that number. 53% lower in Mexico than the United States. Rent in Mexico is 74% lower than in the United States. And again, that's an average for all cities. So your results may vary. But you know what you're spending for rent or what somebody you know is spending for rent. And so for an equivalent place, if you're renting a three-bedroom house in the United States or you're renting a three-bedroom house in Guadalajara, the difference is likely to be somewhere in the neighborhood of 74% less in Mexico. If you're paying $1,000 a month in the United States for your rent, uh, the cost in Mexico would be $260 per month. Uh, these figures were updated in March of 2019, and um, some of the other stuff I got about the cost of food and stuff came from 55 surveys in the last 18 months. A four-person family in Guadalajara spends an average of $1,507 without rent. Now, a single person, their monthly cost is $417 per month, per person, without rent. The cost of living index in uh, Guadalajara is about 5% less than the cost of living in Mexico City. So just like I said, if you live in New York City or rural North Dakota, if you live in Mexico City or Guadalajara or some other rural place or an international tourist destination like Puerto Vallarta or Cancun, um, these averages are not going to be what you pay. The cost of living in the United States is 111% higher than in Mexico, counting rent. So let's talk about some specific things. And I've broken this down, um, the first part of it, by Ajijic, that's here in Jalisco on the north shore of Lake Chapala. Guadalajara, which is the second largest city in Mexico, a city of about 5 million people, and the United States. Um, an, in, an inexpensive restaurant. Ajajic, $4. Guadalajara, $5. United States, $14. Uh, a meal for two people in a mid-range 
restaurant, three course meal, $18 for two people in Ajijic, $24 in Guadalajara, and $40 in the United States. Uh, cigarettes, a 20 pack of Marlboros. In Ajijic, uh, $3. In the United States, $7. Chicken breasts, boneless, skinless, one pound. In Ajijic, $2.14. Guadalajara, $2.35. The United States, $3.85. Now you can beat that price if you go to Safeway and get it on sale. But again, we're talking about averages and the cost of living. Not what it costs you if you're a good shopper. <laughs> uh, beef round steak. One pound, two ninety-four in Ahijic, three forty-nine in Guadalajara, and five eighteen in the United States. Gasoline, one gallon, regular, unleaded, three dollars and sixty-six cents in Ahijic. Um, you're going to find it cheaper in the United States, and I didn't put down the United States figure because you know what gas costs where you live, and it's different all over the United States. It's um, it, it doesn't vary that much in Mexico, so $3.66 for a gallon of regular unleaded. Basic utilities. This is electricity, heating, cooling, water, and garbage. For, and it was calculated at a, as a 915 square foot apartment. Uh, basic utilities. Ajijic, $28. Guadalajara, $31. Now that's for a month's worth of electricity, heating and cooling, and you don't need as much heating and cooling in a whole bunch of Mexico as you do in the United States, so that may be the big difference. Uh, water and garbage. Um, 28 in Ajijic, 31 in Guadalajara, and $153 in the United States. Um, a fitness club, monthly fee for one adult, $19 in Ajijic, $26 in Guadalajara, and $36 in the United States. Uh, going to the movies, uh, a first-run international release, um, $3 in Ajijic, $4 in Guadalajara, $12 in the United States. And um, I don't have the popcorn here, but I guarantee you the popcorn's cheaper, too. <laughs> Talking about rent. I've included Chapala in this, as well as Ajijic and Guadalajara in the United States. Um, so I have four cities. A one-bedroom apartment in the middle of the city, in the city center, uh, in Ajijic, $550 per month. For rent, Chapala, $200 per month, Guadalajara, $280 per month, and you can see that uh, here in the city center of Ajijic, we refer to that as the village, uh, rents are high, twice as much as Chapala or um, Guadalajara. But in the United States, an equivalent apartment is $1,270. Uh, outside of the city center, a little farther out, in Ajijic, $400 a month. Chapala, $260 a month. Guadalajara, $200 a month. And in the United States, $990 a month. A three-bedroom uh, apartment, city center, Ajijic, $930. And I, I think that's really low. I don't think you can get a three-bedroom, well, first of all, there aren't three-bedroom apartments in the city center of Ajijic. You'd be getting a three-bedroom house, and it would be a lot more than an apartment, but 930 would be, I don't think you can find that. Uh, Chapala, 640. Guadalajara, 570. And then the United States, 2060 for a three-bedroom apartment. Uh, three-bedroom 
Apartment outside of the city center in Ahik 780, Chapala 420, Guadalajara 420, and in the United States 1600. Uh, here's one that's really going to apply to the question, can I move to Mexico and live on my retirement income of $800 a month? I always answer that by saying, yes, a lot of people in Mexico live on a lot less. Here's some real numbers. The average monthly net salary after taxes in Ajijic is $410 a month. Now, how does a family live on that? Well, because, first of all, they own their house, so they're not paying rent. And more than one person is making that $400 a month, so they live together. And whether they're young people living together, or grouped up, or it's uh, families living together, more than one person in the family is making money. So they're not living a family of four on $400 a month. Um, average monthly net salary after tax, Ahihik, $410 a month. Guadalajara, $490 a month. And the United States, $3,060 a month. In the United States in 2018, the poverty level, according to the IRS and the uh, federal government of the United States, the poverty level for a family of four was if you made less than $25,100. And for two people working for $1,000 a month in the United States, that's $24,000 a year, you're living in poverty by definition. So, to conclude, if you have $1,500 a month worth of retirement income, in the United States you will, by definition, be living in poverty. In Mexico, you will live well. You will not be poor. Hey, if you like me, give me one of those thumbs up. And please subscribe and hit that little bell so you know when I post next. Please share me with your friends on social media. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed what was on my mind today.